very um, excited to introduce our second speaker, which is Carolina Zareba, um, who's been at Ohio State about three years, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that close? Yep. Assistant professor in the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine um, in Department of Internal Medicine. And so she's going to be telling us a little bit about her program. Um, she's worked with someone that, that a lot of you know, uh, Suba Raman. Um, and raise your hand if you know Suba. Um, so Suba's work is a, a lot in imaging. And, and what you'll see from Carolina is, is that she has expertise in her past from working in electrophysiology, which is the electrical part of the heart. And Suba brings expertise in the structural part of the heart. And when you bring them together, we can really understand a lot of new diseases. So Carolina, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, Dr. Muller. Um, just a little bit about myself. So I'm originally from Poland. I came to the US many, many years ago. Um, and a lot of my inspiration comes from my dad, who's a cardiologist, and my mom, who's a scientist. Um, it's really their care, compassion, and, and really their curiosity that drove me to become a doctor and be part of research as well. So I'm very, very proud to be part of the team here at OSU Advancing Cardiovascular Care, and I want to show you a couple of examples how we're trying to do that. Let me start with a story of one of my patients um, named Beth. She first came to me several years ago. She was um, 47 years old at the time and had been having frequent chest pain both during the day and night. And it was affecting all aspects of her life, being a mom, being a wife, and carrying on her job. She was frustrated, and her family was very concerned. So she had seen multiple doctors and had numerous tests, including an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart, including a stress test where she walked on the treadmill and her heart was monitored, a Holter monitor, which looked for any abnormal heart rhythms, and even a heart cath, an invasive procedure to look for blockages in the arteries. All of these tests showed no abnormalities. And she came to OSU hoping for an answer. As I heard her story, I began to wonder whether she had something called microvascular dysfunction. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's a disease of the very distal coronary arteries that are too small to be seen on a routine heart cath. And one of the only ways to diagnose this is with a stress cardiac MRI a very well-established modality here at OSU. So our MRI team indeed diagnosed her with microvascular dysfunction, and these are Beth's MRI images. The first is a movie of her heart showing normal heart pumping function. The second is a picture of her heart after she received contrast, showing no scar in her heart. And the third is a picture during her stress test. And this shows abnormal perfusion. You can appreciate the inner dark rim of the heart muscle there. Cardiac MRI was able to diagnose her problem, and I was able to start appropriate therapy. For the last two years, she's been doing great, no recurrence of chest pain whatsoever. So what really impacted Beth's life was the ability to accurately diagnose her problem, and cardiac MRI is what made that possible. Um, you've probably heard of cardiac MRI or MRI in general, magnetic resonance imaging. You, you may have had one on your knee. Um, what I want to show you today it's that it's the superior technology when it comes to the heart. It's unique, it's comprehensive, and it requires specialized expertise and resources. And here at Ohio State, we have an internationally renowned cardiac MRI program that really helps patients in our community in very new and innovative ways because of the research we do here. So the examples I'll show you today will demonstrate the power of cardiac MRI, how we're pushing it to the limits here at OSU, and how we're advancing this technology for the rest of the world. So let me start with four patients here. All four of these patients have trouble breathing. These are their echocardiograms, or ultrasounds of the heart. They have varying degrees of heart pumping function, but all have heart muscle thickening. As a cardiologist with only this information, it's hard for us to specialize treatment for each of these patients. And cardiac MRI can really highlight the differences. So these are the same patients and their MRI images with varying te MRI techniques. The first one has cardiac amyloid, an infiltrative disease of the heart. The second one has Fabry's disease and is missing a critical enzyme that can be replaced. The third one has hypertrophic cardi cardiomyopathy and is at risk for life-threatening arrhythmias. And the last one has had a heart attack. You can appreciate the white scar here. And the little black area here happens to be a clot in his heart. So these are four starkly different diagnoses. And all four of these patients 
require very different treatments. And it was really cardiac MRI that made it possible to accurately diagnose them and choose the appropriate therapy. You may have heard of scar in the heart, whether it's focal scar, such as it can be seen with a heart attack in the top picture, or diffuse scar seen in a patient with heart failure. Scar can be dangerous as it can lead to life-threatening heart rhythm abnormalities or arrhythmias. Um, one of the best tests to identify the scar is a cardiac MRI. But we don't have cardiac MRI everywhere. So what if there was a simple test that we could use to screen patients for scar in the heart, such as an EKG, available essentially anywhere? So part of the work that we're doing is looking at patients such as this, and we were able to find specific changes on an EKG that can predict scar in the heart. So a patient can see a doctor, the doctor can get an EKG, identify these changes, and if they're there, confirm them with a cardiac MRI. So really the goal is that we can diagnose scar in the heart earlier and treat it earlier to help prevent dangerous sequelae such as arrhythmias. Now imagine if you could look at inflammation or swelling of the heart, which can be seen in diseases such as um, heart damage related to a heart attack or even a virus. Well, years ago, Dr. Subaraman and Dr. Lon Simonetti saw this emerging need. And through the teamwork and collaboration of OSU doctors, engineers, and physicists, they came up with this sequence. It's called T2 mapping, and it's used all over the world today. You can probably appreciate the brighter areas of the heart muscle here, which are inflamed. And it's also sparked a great deal of research throughout the years. One of our current fellows, Dr. Cardona, is evaluating the impact of this technology and outcomes in patients with heart attacks. So this is just one of the many numerous advances at OSU in heart and vascular care to um, improve lives with cardiac MRI. The last example I'd like to give you is a current project we're working on with Dr. Peter Moeller. Um, this is a very, very interesting and exciting project. Um, this is a genetic pedigree um, of a family on the other side of the world. Circles represent females and squares represent males. And the black shading represents either partial or full genetic mutation. So imagine two parents who are blessed with 10 children. Now imagine that over the years, they've lost five of them suddenly and unexpectedly. What predisposes these children to life-threatening arrhythmias? They've been tested for every disease known to cause arrhythmias, but nothing's turned up. So because of the cutting edge research here at OSU, Dr. Moeller was contacted to solve this problem. And he and his team, through extensive research, have found a brand new mutation in this family. Never been described before. So part of the story is the actual genetic mutation itself. The other part is how it manifests in each affected person, also known as the phenotype. So that's where we come in. What we're trying to do is figure out what do these hearts look like on cardiac MRI or an EKG? How do they behave during a stress test? And really, in a new disease, such as this disease, it's putting all the pieces together that creates this roadmap for, roadmap for doctors to be able to diagnose this in other people they encounter with a similar story or background. The thing I'd like to leave you with is a quote from a very renowned um, doctor here at OSU who happened to be a pioneer in cardiology as well, Dr. Charles Woolley. And he said, precision in diagnosis precedes effective therapy. Cardiac MRI allows us to get to that precise diagnosis. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about it is that it gets us to the right answer, often faster, but it really impacts people's lives. I'm very honored to be part of the cardiac MRI program here and the team at OSU and really advancing this technology and impacting patients. Thank you.